Well, there's been a dramatic shift over the last 20 to 25 years in how patients with spinal cord injury are managed and the outcomes. So the abiding concept really is a time is spine. And spinal cord injury is a time critical event. And so the role of uh, early decompression has had a dramatic impact on the outcomes and the management of people with spinal cord injuries. And so the odds of, a, of an individual having a substantial recovery is about threefold higher if surgery is undertaken within the first 24 hours. This is uh, accompanied by improvements in the intensive care management really focused on the hemodynamic optimization of, of the patient and trying to optimize spinal cord perfusion. And this has also been complemented by advances in uh, rehabilitation to augment the outcomes for individuals with spinal cord injury. So while spinal cord injury remains a devastating event for many individuals, we've seen a shift in outcomes where we are seeing a lot more people with incomplete deficits than in the past. So technology's had an important impact on the diagnosis of spinal cord injury with advanced CT and MRI imaging to precisely identify the type of injury, the nature of the spinal cord compression. There have been advances in intensive care, advances in anesthesia, and advances in surgical technique, and a couple of these have allowed um, teams to operate on individuals safely and in an earlier uh, fashion. The use of evoke potential monitoring coupled with image guided uh, uh, technologies allow for uh, a safer decompression and reconstruction of the injured spinal column, for example. Well, there's uh, intense uh, uh, interest right now in a number of emerging areas. So there are currently are clinical trials that are underway examining uh, inhibitory molecules, including NOGO and RGMA. And both of these are molecules that inhibit repair and regeneration of the injured spinal cord, and there are clinical trials that are examining antibody approaches uh, to target these. In addition, there's a lot of interest in brain-computer interfaces, as well as with the use of electrical stimulation to activate circuits in the injured nervous system uh, to try to facilitate um, uh, recovery of movement, and this is now going into early phase clinical trials. And regenerative therapeutics as well as neuroprotective agents are currently being examined. We've recently completed a trial with the sodium glutamate antagonist Riliazole, and those results are currently under analysis and we're hopeful. And in addition, um, we're really about to enter a new phase of regenerative therapeutics with what I've called next generation engineered neural stem cells. And so this could hearken an exciting uh, area in uh, translational research. Well, I think where we're going to is big data and the idea to um, merge large data sets in order to be um, able to enhance um, our uh, ability to predict outcomes and to enhance care delivery. And so I think this will require uh, international networks to try to drive this. And so a lot of this data collection will not require randomization, but will require high quality pr prospective collection of data. Having said that, certain therapeutics um, such as uh, regenerative uh, technology, stem cell based uh, uh, treatments will need to be validated through randomized controlled trials.